Hello, fifth graders. This is Mrs. Walsh uh, reviewing chapter nine, lesson 11, least common multiples. That's not right. <laughs> We're not doing least common multiples. We are doing adding mixed numbers. So I'm sorry that did not get changed, but hopefully this is. All right, there we go. I can use equivalent fractions as a strategy to add fractions and I can add mixed numbers. What are mixed numbers? Those are those pesky ones with whole numbers and fractions. So let's get started. A hammerhead shark swims two and one quarter miles. The next day he swims one and one quarter miles or one fourth. How many miles did he swim altogether? So we need to add two and a quarter plus one and a quarter, or we can say one fourth means the same thing, okay? So right here, we notice right away that our upsie, let me go back there, sorry, I need to get my pen tool. There we go, all right. So I notice right away with my fractions that I have the same denominator, hooray. That means I don't need to do any converting my denominators. So I'm gonna write as a sum of wholes and fractions. So what I like to do is I'm gonna put my two and my one over here, and then I'm gonna add my quarter and my quarter. This here has you break it down into ones. I'm not gonna do that, I don't see the point, okay? making a whole lot more work. So one, two plus one is three, right here. And then, so I've got three, then I need to add my fractions. So right here, I've got one quarter plus one quarter is two quarters. So here you've got two, two and two fourths. Okay, now what do I need to do? I need to simplify, so, I can simplify this one by dividing both sides by two, and I have one half. So my answer is the shark swam three and one half miles. Okay, so we right here, simplest form right there. I skip some of those. I'm not gonna have you break down all of those numbers. You're just going to add them together right here. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, the diagram shows the length of the sea turtle. What is the total length of the sea turtle? So we have seven eighths plus three and a fourth plus one and one eighth. So here, do we have the same denominator? No, we need to find the LCD, okay? So to find the LCD, what do we have to do? We have to find the lowest common multiple. The LCD, LCD, this is eight. We can quickly look at that because we know that eight is a multiple of four, okay? So how do I change my one fourth to eights? I need to times the four by two to get eight. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. One times two is two. So now I have two eighths. Okay, so this one here is three and two eighths. So I'm gonna rewrite the problem. I have seven eighths plus three and two eighths plus one and one eighth. Okay, and in the slide before, I said we are going to move our whole numbers together. So I have three plus one plus seven eighths plus two eighths plus one eighth. See how it's much easier now to add these things together. So I've got three plus one is four. And then I'm gonna have my eighths. And I got seven plus two is nine plus one is 10. Okay, so I've got four and 10 eighths. 
Now, who can tell me what is wrong with this number, with this fraction? Can I have a bigger numerator than my denominator? I hope that you said no. So now I need to simplify this fraction, okay? So 10 eighths is the same as one and two eighths because I've got eight eighths equals one and I've got two left over. So now I have to add my one to my four. So now I've got five and two eighths, okay? Because I've got the one from here and I have to add it to my four. So now can I simplify this one? Yes, I can. I can divide both sides by two. Remember what you have to do to the bottom, you have to do the top and vice versa. So my answer is five and a quarter or one fourth, okay? So that is my answer. Those fractions are really, really pesky. Let's try and do another one. Okay, so here, we have, oh, that's just what I just did. Never mind. Sorry, I accidentally uh, kept that one there. All right, so let's try some here. First of all, I'm going to do is look at my denominators to make sure they're the same. They are, so I can do four plus three plus three fifths plus one fifth. So here, I've got seven, my denominator is five, and I've got three plus one is four. So my answer is seven and four fifths. Okay, right here, yep, I'm good with my denominators. So I've got seven plus two plus four elevenths plus six elevenths. I've got four, seven plus two is nine. My denominator is 11. I got four plus six is 10. So my answer is nine and 10 elevenths. I'll make sure that looks like a zero there. All right, okay, now I look at this one. Uh-oh, I've got two twelfths and fourths. Okay, so now I have to find my least common denominator. So I know my least common denominator for 12 and four is going to be what? Going to be 12, I hope you said 12. Okay, so I've got one over 12 plus, now I've got fourths. Now I have to convert this to an equivalent fraction. What can I do to make one fourth into twelfths? Okay, so I know that if I times four by three, I get 12. And what I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. Or bottom, I have to do the top. Okay, so one times three is three. So now I've got three, one twelfth plus three twelfths. That's gonna be much easier to add together. So I've got five plus six plus one twelfth plus three twelfths. I've got five plus six is eleven. I got one and I got twelfths as my denominator. One plus three is four. Now what's the next step? I have to simplify. Can I simplify this? I hope you said yes. So I am going to divide both sides by four because they're both divisible by four. Okay, four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three. So my answer is 11 and one third. Okay, this is a lot of work, I know it is, but you just take it in stages. Add your whole numbers first and then set aside your fractions and work on your fractions and then do them all together. Let's see if we have another one to do. Oh yes, we do. Okay, well this might make it a little bit easier right here, they're stacked. So first thing we're gonna do is look at our denominator. Here, 
we have to find equivalent fractions. So we've got to find our lowest common denominator. Okay, for three and nine, I know it's going to be nine. These ones are easy. Okay, when one of the denominators is a multiple of the other one, you know which one to use. All right, so I've got two thirds and I need to make it ninths. So what do I do to three to make it a ninth? I multiply it by three. Three times three is nine. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Two times three is six. So I'm gonna change this one now to six ninths, okay? So we have our whole numbers. Three plus four is seven. I've got my ninths. I got six plus four plus six is 10. Okay, so that is going to be a problem, isn't it? Why is it going to be a problem? Can you let me know why? Right, because I can't have a numerator bigger than my denominator. Well, I know I've got one nine in there, so I got one whole. So I'm gonna add my whole to the seven, which is eight. I've got one ninth left over. So the answer is eight and one ninth. Okay. Now let's look at this one. Again, we have, we do not have the same denominators, so I've got to change it again. Okay. I'm gonna change my fourth to eight. So I've got three fourths. I've got to make it equal eight. So I'm gonna multiply my two times, four times two equals eight. Then I have to times the top by two as well. So that's gonna be six. So now I can change this to six eighths. Now three plus six is nine. Six plus one is seven. And I've got my eights, okay? So now look at this number here. Can I simplify this? No, I can't, you're right, because why? I have a prime number here. So the answer is nine and seven eighths, I'm done. Okay, now let's have a look at this one. Ooh, this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky. I have sevenths and I have halves. So I can't automatically see what my LCD is gonna be here. So I'm gonna go back to those common, least common multiples that we did a couple of lessons ago, last week. So I've got two, and I've got seven. I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Oh, that makes me think. I recognize a number here, I'm gonna stop. I've got seven, and I've got 14. Okay, so 14 is gonna be my L, C, D, okay? So I have to rewrite these fractions. So I need to have set 14 is my denominator. I times seven by two to get 14. So I've got to times my three by two. I'm gonna get six. And here, what I'm gonna times two by to get 14. Times two by seven. Two times seven is 14, which means I have to times this by seven as well. One times seven is seven. So my new problem, let's rewrite it to make it nice and neat. I'm gonna rewrite it in a different color. Let me just choose my color here, pen color. Let's do it in blue. All right, so my new problem is four and six fourteenths plus seven and seven fourteenths. So four plus seven, because I'm gonna do my whole numbers first, four plus seven is 11. My denominator is 14 and six plus seven is 13. Phew, I do not have to do any more whole number conversions there. So my answer is 11 and 13 fourteenths. Can I simplify that? Remember, you're gonna ask every fraction, every question, every time you get an answer, you're going to ask if you can simplify the fraction. You have to ask yourself that every single time. 
Can you simplify this fraction? Think about it, tell me the answer. The answer is no. I hope you said no, why not? Because 13 is a prime number. If we have a prime number in there, we can't make it any smaller. So our answer is 11 and 13 fourteenths. Okay, so remember with these fractions, let's see if we have any more here. No, we do not. So remember with these fractions, you are going to, first of all, add the whole numbers together. With your fractions, you have to look to see if you need to change the denominators and find the LCD. Then you do that, then you add them together. Can you simplify, yes or no? Do you have a number like this where your numerator is bigger than your denominator? Then how many whole numbers do you have in there? Make sure you add that whole number to your existing whole numbers. Lots of steps, but if you follow the same steps every time, you can do it. Okay, so now complete your assignment on iReady. Complete your reteach page and post your what dojo. Complete Prodigy if you do that. And if you need help, um, you can write down your questions and ask during office hours or message your teacher on Dojo. Good luck and have fun with those fractions. Yeah, take my pen away.